Hello friends and welcome to Edupedia World Videos. This is the chapter 12 of the course Basics of Programming in C Language and in this chapter we will be learning about functions in C language. Okay, so just a basic definition of what a function is. A function is a group of statements that are executed in a sequence to perform a specific task. So whenever you have a specific task to perform and you want to perform that task multiple times in your program, so what you can do is you can write a small function for that and you can call that function wherever you want to perform that task. So it will reduce your size of the code. Okay. So every C language code has at least one function. So one function is there and it is mandatory. It is not possible to have a program running without one function and that function is known as the main function. So main function is the entry point of your program. So that, that is the fun first function that is executed by the operating system when a particular program is run. So in case your program is not having a main function, you will not be able to compile an exe of it or you will not be able to make a binary or a executable of that program because main function will serve as the entry point of your program and in case there is no main function there is no entry point so there is no starting instruction okay that OS will actually call so and one more thing that there can be only one main function in a program so if your program is split, split into a number of C files only one of those files should have the main function no other file should have a main function okay so now definition is done so let us continue to the types of functions so there are two basic types of functions in C language namely library functions and user defined functions library functions are the functions like printf scanf etc uh, these functions are actually declared in the C libraries and they come inbuilt in the C language so you don't have to write them you can straight away call them and use them whereas the user defined functions are the functions which are created by you in your code and uh, these are the functions that you will be uh, writing and calling in your code okay. so main is also a user defined function because main function is defined by the user himself so you yourself write the entire code that is to be executed in the main function so that is why main is also a user defined function it is only different in a particular way that the prototype of the main function or the signature of the main function is already predefined okay you cannot change that particular prototype of the main function so main function has to return an integer so that is fixed so you cannot change the return type of a main function moreover main function accepts a particular set of arguments which we have not done till now which will be done in a particular chapter which will be dedicated to command line arguments and we will cover over it over there so these things cannot be configured you, you have a particular uh, way in which you have to define your main function okay so other than that all the code inside the main function is at your own disposal so you have to write the entire code okay. and functions can be used to reduce the size of your code already discussed that functions perform repetitive tasks okay so but you uh, suppose you have to calculate the average of set of numbers various times inside your uh, code so what you can do is you can just create one function that calculates the average of a given set of numbers and you can call that function wherever you want to call and pass it the set of numbers and that function will ultimately calculate the average of your uh, numbers and then it will return it back to you so another advantage uh, that functions give is that of the reusability. So what does reusability mean? It means that once written, a function can be reused at a number of places inside your same code also and inside different codes also. So you can use the same C file or you can just copy and paste the function to some other C file. Or there is one more option that you create a library of your function. So that we will do uh, in the advanced course that how to actually convert your functions into a library so okay that we will keep aside for now for now you can uh, learn that the same function can be pasted into 
a number of other code files so that way you can reuse your function so this function that we created in our code to calculate the average of a set of numbers and suppose some days later you again are working in a similar kind of code where you need to calculate the average of some numbers so you don't need to write a, the whole code again you just have to copy and paste that particular function or use that particular C file in which you have written that particular function by compiling your code and use that function from there. Okay, so we will uh, learn how to do these things in our practical sessions. Okay, the components of a function. So the function components are first is the return type. Okay, what value does a function return? That is specified by the return type. Suppose a function has to return an integer type of value or number, then your data type would be integer. So the return type of that particular function would be integer. If it has to return a character, then its data type would be a character. Okay. Then the second thing is the name of the function. So every function in C language has a unique name. Okay. So you have to give a name to the function, just similar to the names we give to the variables. You have to give names to the functions also. And the same naming conventions follow for functions as for the variables. Okay. Then there are the input parameters to the function. So in function you have to take certain input from the user how does the function work it works first it takes the input from the user okay then it does some processing and then it returns the output back to the user so these input parameters specify that how the input will be taken and how many input parameters will be there suppose you are passing two variables to the function so that will be specified in the input parameters and also the data type of those input parameters suppose the function is expect accepting input characters or integers so that depends on your application if you want to add two numbers suppose so your input arguments will all obviously be integers okay and if suppose you want to reverse a string reverse your name so your input argument would be a character pointer Okay, so another component and the, one of the main components of the function is the function body. So this function body is actually where your executable statements lie. So this is a set of statements that compose your function. Okay, so here you will write whatever the code you want to write inside your function. That will come in your function body. And at the end, the function has a return statement. So what is a return statement? A return statement will tell the compiler that what value will be returned by a function so this particular statement return statement actually gives the output of the function okay here you have the input of the function then inside the function body you have the processing over that input and finally in the return statement you have the output from that function so some of these parameters are mandatory some are not that we will learn in a slight bit of time till then let us learn working of a function so how a function gets called and how it works okay so this is our main function inside C language okay it is always having an integer as its return type so we have int main and suppose we have a declaration of two variables a and b okay and in that we what we are doing is we have created a function func a b so this is the our function Okay, func int a and int b and it is also returning an integer. So it is returning an integer and expecting two input arguments which are both integers. Okay, so this over here is known as your function definition. Okay, so these are input parameters. So input parameters, what are they? Input parameters are just the placeholders for your actual data to be passed to that function. So the actual data that we have to pass to the function is known as input arguments okay. and input parameters are nothing but the placeholders for the input arguments okay you can uh, consider this as the buckets input parameters are just the buckets and input arguments is water that is stored into that bucket so you can use that particular water inside your code okay so this is your input parameters you have to define uh, you have to remember that in the function definition the names that you give to your input is known as your input parameters whereas the data that we pass to our function while calling the function is known as input arguments okay. so 
we have defined a particular function over here function func okay the def definition is over here the syntax of definition we will cover up later on when we do our practical but here you can just have a look at the basic algorithm of how a function works okay here we have defined a function we have given the input parameters so we have told the compiler that we will expect two input parameters both of them are integers and our function will also return an integer value here inside the function body so this comp comprises the function body over here so inside the function body so what we are doing is we are declaring a variable in sum and we are assigning it a value of a plus b so we are adding both the input parameters and assigning that particular value to sum on the next line what we are doing is we are returning this value sum so this is where the output of the function is returned okay now let us see from here first we come to the main function okay we declare two variables then we have the function call so this is the call of the function so this is the place where we actually call our function so uh, this is the variable that we have taken to store the result of the function this comes on the right hand side okay so int res is the integer variable that will store the result of this particular function call and the function call is as it is func then a comma b so a and b are our variables which we have defined over here so the names of these variables can match the input parameters but it is not mandatory okay these could be something else also these could be c and d also but here then you will have to use c and d although here you can use any variable names that hardly matters you can also give the uh, explicit values okay you can straight away write 10 and 15 over here here we have uh, taken some variables and then passed them but you can explicitly give the values over here also okay so what happens is on this particular line the function gets called okay. so we will go to when we reach this particular line the control will then go to the first statement of the particular function okay so what compiler does it switches to the first statement of the function and it also takes the inputs from here input arguments from here and input arguments are passed to the function so then the function is executed and the return statement is executed then the result is returned to the same statement okay so, so you will come back to the same line and whatever the right hand side has produced so whatever result is returned from here will be substituted in the place of this function call so if we have returned uh, 25 from here 10 plus 15 would be 25 so we would have written 25 in the result over here so 25 will be replaced over here okay in, in place of func ab we will have 25 so the statement will become int res is equal to 25 so 25 will get stored in the res variable so on the next line what we are doing is we are just printing result is equal to res so it will print result is equal to 25 and then there is another return statement but this return statement is for the main function okay so main function also returns an integer so we have a return statement for that also and we are returning 0 from here so 0 is by default that we return to the operating system signifying that our program has executed successfully and there has been no error so there might be some other status codes that you will be using for your own conventions but for the time being just uh, assume that by default we return 0 from the main function the rest of this uh, return values and from the main function we will study in the advanced course okay so this is basically how the function gets called if we go further we will learn about the phases of function so first phase is the declaration of the function okay so declaration is just the way to tell the compiler about the function name so name of the function its return type and its input parameters okay so this is just a way to tell the compiler that okay this kind of a function exists somewhere in some of the c files that you might be compiling in the future okay so this is just to verify that the call of that particular function is right is correct okay this is done in the header files either you will do this in the header files or at the beginning of your c files okay generally this should be done in the header files only but you can also declare your function at the beginning of your C files and in case you have not declared your function okay then a compiler will not find it until or unless it is defined before the current line okay if you have 
defined it before the current line, then only compiler will find it if the declaration is missing. This we will do in our practical session, so that time it will be more clear to you. Anyways, so definition. Definition of a function is the place where actually the body of the function is written. Okay, the set of statements that comprise the function that gets written during the definition of the function. Okay, then there is the function call. So this is the place where you actually call that particular function, where you pass the input arguments to that function and you store the result of that function in a particular variable. So that particular line is known as the function call. So there can be multiple calls for the same function throughout your code. Whenever you want to perform that particular task that that function performs, you just make a function call. Okay. Then there are some mandatory and optional components out of these. The mandatory components of a function are function name. So name is obviously mandatory to be given to a function. Then there is return type. So return type is also mandatory, although your function might or might not return something. In case your function is not returning any output, okay, then you should have the void return type. But in case it returns some output, then the return type should also be the corresponding data type. Suppose it is returning numbers, then it should be integer. If it is run, returning characters, then it should be character and so on. Then there is your function body. So function body is also mandatory. Okay. Then there is optional components. Input parameters are optional. So a function may or may not accept an input. Okay. There can be a function which just generates a random number. Okay. So you don't need to pass any input to that. It will its function is to just generate a random number. So it does not need a input. So these kind of function can be there. And then there is a return statement. So return statement is only not mandatory in case of a void function. Okay, a void function is the function that returns a void value. That means that it returns nothing. So in only in that case, only in cases of a void function, only in the case the return type of a function is void, the return statement is, is not mandatory. It can be skipped. But in all the other cases, you should have a return statement. In case you will not have, the compiler will issue a warning that uh, we have reached an end of the non-void function while compiling. So that is a warning in most of the cases, but in some cases your compilation environment can be such that it will issue an error and not compile your program at all. Okay, so this was uh, about the uh, theoretical part of functions. So I uh, hope you understood whatever we discussed in this particular video and uh, Continue to watch Basics of Programming in C language. Thank you.